let's get to week 17. And before we do that, before we do that, a little more on John Madden. The, 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 and the way we're couching it is the best thing you learned about him in the last 24 hours that you didn't already know. Do you have something in that room? Well, I, I had no idea he was drafted on by the Philadelphia Eagles. That, that would be the first one, you know, that I, I had no idea about. So I guess that would be, you know, and what we I learned that yesterday on the show. That, that to me was interesting. No clue. You know, again, I, I, I thought he just got into coaching and kind of went from there and might have played college football. I just don't ever remember growing up hearing that that type of uh you know, those statements or him ever referring to, you know, him being drafted. So I guess that would be the most interesting personal wise, you know, as far as like what, what I learned about John Madden, man, I don't know after one of the funnier things to me was I think a clip, I think that was us passing that around yesterday with Madden on David Letterman back in the early days of Letterman going through what numbers look on guy, how, what, how certain numbers look on guys and, you know, saying that, you know, certain guys just can't wear certain numbers. Like if you're tall and long, you can't wear 66. That's for a dumpy short guy, you know, a guard or something like that to me was hilarious. And then the, the best part of it is Letterman going, well, what about 77? That's probably for a dumpy guy, too. And he didn't realize that Madden had more 77 with the Eagles. And Madden kind of just went over and went, oh, no, no, that's for a tall, big guy. And a few minutes later, he asked Madden once again, he goes, so what number did you wear? And he goes, 77. And they all laughed. And they're like, oh, so that's why that one was for, you know, a big, tall guy. I just, I, I think I just got the biggest kick out of just – seeing some of the interviews and other things that maybe I had not seen over the years, you know, over the last day that were just really funny and, and uh, another, another inside look at the personality of John Madden. Look at that Cal poly baseball. There's another one. I didn't realize that either. Look at that. There were so many things about John Madden that I either didn't know, or I had forgotten. For example, the extent to which he, tried to comfort the family of Daryl Stingley and be with Daryl Stingley yeah, yeah. after the catastrophic injury that that happened because of something his player did. It wasn't even his own player. And calling the airport and getting Chuck Fairbanks, the Patriots coach, to get to the air to the hospital after that had happened. Just those little details I didn't know about. And and I didn't know about the thing that I shared with you before the show. He told friends, and this there was a great article from The Ringer, Brian Curtis, a lot of details in there, things I didn't know about Madden. But he told friends that that they should never sleep on the side of a hotel bed that was next to the phone, quote, because that's where every businessman sat his ass, end quote. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, words, words to live by from John Madden, that. words of wisdom. I hear yeah. that. You know me, I'm a little germ, a germ freak as is, and that's one where, like, if I lay in a bed at a hotel, and I go, whoa, this is everybody lays on this side because it seems like everybody lays on the side that's closest to the bathroom or maybe closest to the phone. I always go to the side that I go, this seems less worn out. I don't know what it is. I guess it just gives me a little less of the heebie-jeebies when I get to sit you know, on that side and don't have to think about, yeah, some big businessman's butt was on the other side. I, 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 hear, I hear him there. There's some logic to that. <laughs> I, and so many of the things he said that, that were so simple, they made so much sense. Yeah. And that was one of his great skills, finding those sayings that were relatable but that brought the point home. And, you know, he spent a year teaching at Cal Berkeley before he got into broadcasting, and he he wanted to teach football. He wanted to see how people reacted to the information they were getting as he tried to take football concepts and make them understandable to anyone. And that's what he spent 30 years doing as a broadcaster, taking complicated football concepts and making them seem easy, far easier than what they really were, but at least they help you understand how the game works. And that's just not the way broadcasting worked back in those days. And he was the master of it. Uh, and there, that's why you know we say there will never be another John Madden. And there won't be, at least not in my lifetime. Maybe someday, years and years from now, ain't going to be my, ain't going to be my, my thing to be entertained by, but it's going to be a long time before there's another one. Yeah. Um, uh, another point that we spent time yesterday at PFT discussing, and last night on PFT PM, Miles Simmons and I were kicking it around, the idea of some sort of a major permanent honor for John Madden. Yeah. Whether it's name the Hall of Fame after him, name the All-Pro team the All-Madden team, although the voting would have to be tailored, I think, to, to do justice to what he would think. 
somebody sent me an idea last night. A reader sent an idea that just kind of like, it, at first I thought, ah, that's kind of hokey. And then it just kind of like exploded in my brain. How about this? They put a new team in Oakland and they call it the Maddens. Well, that, that would be the would ultimate. would be awesome. The ultimate. That would be awesome. Yeah. Because the Browns are named after Paul Brown. Put a team in Oakland, an expansion team, whenever they expand next, and we know they're going to because of the great Mamu that comes from gambling, put a team in Oakland and call it the Maddens, or call it the All Maddens, which actually kind of sounds better, but call it the Maddens. The, all, the Maddens are the All Maddens, but that's the, that's the ultimate living tribute forever for John Madden. Make a team in the, in the area where he's from, in the city where he coached, and name it after him. Yeah, I, that's I, that. It wouldn't get any better than that. I mean, it, it really wouldn't. Uh, I don't know if that's actually a realistic opportunity or you know thing to happen. But man, yeah, I, I I was more thinking of like, hey, a patch on the jersey, you know, of every guy on the in the NFL or something on the helmet or maybe a little emblem or something to you know recognize him in the end zone of every you know football field. That's kind of where my mind went. I mean, again, if they could pull that off, that would be cool. You're right. There is the Browns, and that is after the Brown family. Uh, but, but uh, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. I'm sorry. There. I want something permanent, though. I, I, look, oh, you I, want I permanent, assume, permanent. Yeah. I, I assume there's going to be patches and emblems and honors for the, for the entirety of the 2022 season and presumably the rest of the 2021 season. I want something big. I want something bold. I want something that reflects that this guy had more influence and touched more lives as it came to football than anyone ever had, anyone ever has, or anyone ever will, because his legacy will endure. It's past, present, and future for as long as they're playing the Madden video game, and they're going to be playing the Madden video game as long as they're playing football. Let's face it. They're never going to name it anything else. Do you no, really think they're going to say, oh, no. you know what, Al? We're going to call it NFL 2025. No, it's going to be Madden football for as long as they make the game. And if EA Sports ever loses the license, I'm sure part of the transaction is going to be whatever company takes it over. It's going to be Madden there as well, as long as they meet the appropriate quality standards and create a real football game. And that's what John Madden insisted on. He wanted 11 on 11 football when they first came to him with the idea. And, like, you know, the technology doesn't quite support that well, then we're not doing it yeah. until you can figure out how to do it. So, um, I, 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 uh, God, that's, <laughs> I wish, I wish there was a way to, uh oh, I wish there was a way to, to get the old game. There's got to be some way somehow to find the old game and play the old game. Cause, uh, even though it's, it's awesome now, All there's right. something about well, that what's, old game what's, that was What's magical. an idea, you know, that you would use to, to then do that? Man, Howie Long, oh, Howie Long looks like he just hurt somebody on the Jets. It looks like he hurt Ken O'Brien. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. So, wait, but what about, yeah, well, what, what's another idea other than naming a franchise after him that you could do to kind of give him a tribute here as we go along? Oh. They're like, well, what do you got in mind there when you, when you say that? Well, I mean, the first thing I thought of yesterday was call it the, the Madden Super Bowl. They would never do that, but that was the first thing I thought of. Just name the Super Bowl after him, and it's always going to be the Madden Super Bowl. And the next best thing is name the Pro Football Hall of Fame, the John Madden Pro Football Hall of Fame. Mm. That that's a fitting tribute to John Madden, something that is big and something that is permanent, like the Lombardi Trophy. The problem is there really aren't many things out there that you could latch on to and say this is always going to be named after John Madden that is big enough. I mean, the, 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 the trophy they give you when you win the Super Bowl would be perfect, but, you know, it's taken. That's the problem. Certain things that are big enough are taken. So the Madden Super Bowl, that's pretty damn big. It's not taken, and it's not anything we ever even thought would be named after someone. But that's kind of what I was thinking along the lines of until the idea of naming a franchise the Maddens or the All Maddens. That, that has me thinking a different way altogether because I think if he had his preference – you probably kind of like the idea of having a team named after him. Yeah, it's like one we should put out on Twitter, like where we should like put a question out there, like what's a what's a tribute to Madden that could last forever, you know? Because and they're not going to name the Super Bowl after him. That's not going to happen. You know, Hall of Fame. Hey, I mean, there's I, I can maybe get behind that. There's something there to that. But there's also going to be, you know, I think an outcry of like, wait, people are more deserving than him to have that. 
you know, honor. Right? No, there aren't. Who? So, Who? Well, Who's there's more deserving? Other no, people who are there go. isn't. He's the most deserving. And if they if they have a problem with it, they can shove it where the sun don't shine. All right. He Bro- is the most deserving without question. No one has had an influence on the game of football like him uh, ever in all the ways he did it and what he means to the game. That's an argument that's a non-starter for me. And I think for most apparently, people. I mean, you're about to punch the me one, there. Holy crap. But, but well, you're, you're, hey, you know, you want to be in the same room. Sometimes you got to take a little bit of the smoke, bro. But the, uh, the, 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 the there's no one. There's no one that could make a no one. You know, give me one guy. One guy that could that could that could even begin to enter the argument with John Madden. Give me one. Bill Belichick. No. Uh, yeah. Because all, all he did was coach. All he did was coach. No. Okay. I mean, that was the only the greatest coach ever. They should, coach name, ever. They should so, name the I mean, coach of the year award after Bill Belichick. Okay. That, that's easy. That's yeah, easy. Okay. That's his. That's his honor. All right. Mad, Madden no, you're was right. bigger Madden's because they don't name the game Belichick. I, I, you know, Madden yeah. would be up there. You're right. With it's, it's really probably him. Um, you know, the original, you know, commissioner who brought. I'm blanking on his name. That brought Pete Rozelle. Yeah, right. I mean, those are the names that come to my head right off the bo- the the bat. Lombardi, uh, Paul Brown. He's got the Super Bowl trophy. I know. I'm just I'm through naming names of in that in that class. Right. I'm just doing right. that. You know, George Hallis, you're right. So it's 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 a limited few, but his his reach did go beyond the football field, to your point. You know, so right. that's that's where I get it. I, I I hear you there. I was just having a conversation and throwing that's some fine. things out I'm there. Having, hey, you man, jerk. it's our last show of the year. Let's yeah, stir happy up a little freaking bit. New Year, but, you jerk. But 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 think about it. Think about it. You mentioned Pete Rozelle. Yeah. His name's on the Super football. Bowl MVP award. The, there's, yeah, a, duh, the, there's, duh. there's a Hall of Fame <laughs> award for broadcasting right. that is named after him. Right. George Hallis has the permanent initials on the Bears uniform. I mean, again, for certain people, there needs to be something that is permanent. Lombardi Trophy. There needs to be something permanent. And John Madden deserves something permanent, but it deserves to be, frankly, bigger than than what anyone else has. And the Lombardi Trophy, it's kind of taken on a life of its own. There are probably a lot of people that don't even realize it's named after a guy who I'm coached sure. the Packers yeah. in the first two championships. It's just the Lombardi Trophy. That's what they call it. Right. Just like the Madden game, that's what they call it. But but I, I just I feel like it needs to be something big. Yeah, I and, hear you. Uh, I hear you. Maybe, maybe we'll throw some ideas out there. I think we should. Uh, I'd, I'd like to hear some people's responses. I'm going to tweet Chris it here just in a tweeted, second. So there we'll, it see, goes. we'll see what people. No, Boom. no. Somebody else I did, did it really for quick you. while you were yeah. talking. Boom. It's out the there. ultimate multitasker. <laughs> uh, Jeff Rowan tweeted that he learned from Vern Lundquist that the Madden cruiser was kept at a balmy 58 degrees, and he was oblivious to the discomfort <laughs> of any great. of his passengers. That's great. Peter King had an item in Sports Illustrated in 1989. I was reading some of it last night where he he got on the bus and and took a trip with John Madden uh, and chronicled the whole thing. Yeah, which. Uh, yeah, it's, I I don't know. I feel know. like I vaguely remember that. He's claustrophobic on planes. I'll tell you what, there's only so much of that bus you can do either. I mean, he was on that bus nonstop. Yeah. You, you finish a game in one place and you get on the bus and off you go. And you're on that bus, you know, maybe most of the week getting to the next place where the yeah. game is, depending upon how the schedule oh, fell together. I, yeah, I, I know. That's, ama- that's a, one of the amazing things about it. I mean, he'd have a game in San Francisco one week because of Joe Montana and Bill Walsh. And the next week he'd be in New York and you go, damn, he drove across the country and he's going back again for another San Francisco game the next week. To, so, I, you know, I mean, you're right. Being in a, a car or a bus that long is, is not easy. But I guess when you got big windows on the side and you can see the ground and everything like that, it, it takes a little ease off the, uh, you know, claustrophobic aspect of, uh, you know, being scared to fly and all that. One thing that I could guess about John Madden would be that he's probably uh, saying enough of this about me. There's great football games this weekend. Let's focus on the football games this weekend. Although I have a feeling we're going to be remembering and talking about John Madden for the balance of the season and beyond. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.